Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. It was a milestone for Roseau, Minnesota today, 13 years after a major flood destroyed much of the city. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Today, a special ceremony marked the near completion of a multi-million dollar flood protection project in Roseau. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us then and now. In June of 2002, the Roseau River spilled over its banks in the city of Roseau, flooding two-thirds of the homes and businesses here, causing $100 million worth of damage. Hey. Hey. Today, a special ceremony marked the near completion of a $45 million flood control project for Rosa. Um, and, I, and I personally have been looking forward to this day be since before I had gray hair. So. The focal point of this flood control project is this four and a half mile long diversion channel. During times of high water, it can divert much of the Roseau River around the east side of town. The entire project is scheduled for completion next month, and it includes miles of trails for hiking, biking, and ATVs, along with plenty of habitat for birds. We now have a diversion channel that protects families, protects jobs. It's the, exactly the sort of investment in our infrastructure that we should be making. I know everybody thinks that um, if this takes too long, but um, and I do too. But in the realm of Corps of Engineer projects, this is a speedy delivery. Uh, <laughs> Among today's guests was Roseau resident and former U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Bob Berglund, who at 87 calls the project the most important in Roseau's history. I think so, without a doubt. Oh, okay. Not even close. All right. Yeah. Don't have to worry about those uh, high water rains anymore. No more. No more. Okay. And tornadoes are not a common thing here. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, 13 years after its devastating flood, one more city joins the list of towns that can handle high water with much more confidence. From Roseau, Minnesota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Since major valley flooding in 1997, several other cities, including Grand Forks, Crookston, and Wahpeton, have completed flood control projects. Meanwhile, a possible diversion project for Fargo-Moorhead is still years away. It feels more like fall than summer out there today. Rainy, cool, clouds, some wind. Is this going to stick around? Let's find out with meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch? Indeed, it's a cool one out there. The temperature in the FM area right now, 59 degrees. It's 63 in Detroit Lakes. And look at to the south with all the green on the radar. Some moderate to heavy showers in southeast North Dakota. That's where things are the heaviest. They continue to swirl their way around in the same area. Lisbon right now, some soggy, soggy excuse me, soggy showers that extend up through Norman County into Polk County near Faustin right now. This rainfall will continue into the evening and overnight where it's dry in the Devil's Lake Basin. I anticipate it will stay so. Temperatures hovering into the upper 50s and low 60s all evening long. More fall-like weather for our windy Wednesday. I'll have details on when the rain goes away and if summer returns. I, I don't so. think we're talking about leaves falling off the okay. trees yet. Ooh. So yes. some good news for warm weather lovers in a few minutes. Good. I like that. Thanks, Hutch. You bet. A GoFundMe page has been set up for a family who lost their home and almost everything in a fire. The Kostriba family has only the clothes on their backs and managed to save a couple of safes, a TV, and a family heirloom before a bulldozer tore down the rest of their home. Crews say it looks like it started in the garage and quickly spread into the home and up into the rafters. Still no word yet on what caused the fire, but if you'd like to donate, head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Neighbors are calling a home that was heavily damaged by fire and sprayed with graffiti an eyesore. And the city of Fargo is calling it dangerous. Now, the city is considering demolition. Fargo's housing inspector says more than 50% of the house at 14th Street and 1st Avenue was damaged by a fire. And according to city code, if it's not cleaned up, that means it has to be demolished. A public hearing is set for August 31st to give the owner a chance to explain why the home shouldn't be demolished. At that meeting, people can come out and share their views on the house. A 58-year-old Fargo man is dead after his vehicle ended up upside down in a ditch. 
The crash happened this morning on Cass County Road 38, two miles south of Alice. The driver missed a curve and the vehicle went into the shoulder. Now he attempted to bring the vehicle back onto the road, but it slid sideways and overturned, upside down in the ditch. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was found partially ejected underneath the truck. He was pronounced dead at the scene. His name has not been released yet. There are probably a few more personal gifts one can give than the gift of time and the gift of self. And today, both of those gifts are very evident at Make-A-Wish in Fargo. And they're from a 10-year-old girl. One, two, three. Good. A camera captures the moment as Morgan Hallgren and people at Make-A-Wish unloaded tubs of toys. Morgan turned 10 in June, and for her birthday, she asked to help others. She knocked on some doors, talked to people, and collected hundreds of toys, marking and markers and coloring books, and even gift cards for Make-A-Wish. Her goal? Help kids so they can help forget about their illness and feel joy and happiness. When I was younger, my aunt showed me a documentary on, on locks of love and Make-A-Wish and the Humane Society and how people donated to those causes. And Morgan has been involved with those charities as well. She says that she's given hair to beautiful lengths and locks of love. The first time, she was only six years old. As for the toys that she brought, there have, will be a special place in the Make-A-Wish toy closet for them. That's where the first wishes start for children with life-threatening medical conditions. When Fargo kids return to school a week from Thursday already, some of them will be in a new school, Ed Clapp Elementary. It's right across the street from Essentia Health, and that's the reason in part for a partnership between the school and the hospital. And today, some of the health care workers at Essentia got a first-hand look at the new school. What the partnership is all about is the hospital will provide mentors for kids, and they'll work on all kinds of health-related issues, from nutrition, to bike safety, but Essentia's Rob Cunningham says this partnership isn't just a one-way street. A lot of the work that we're going to do with uh, the students here at Ed Clapp is to work on uh, health promotion, uh, physical activity, and besides us uh, working with the kids, the kids are going to be working with us and to teach us uh, a little bit more about what we can do to be healthy as well. School officials say in addition to the activities in this school, the students may well provide the hospital with some artwork or do some concerts there and they say they are already investing in some partnership fun for Halloween with the healthcare theme. A bedroom full of zombies, creepy basements and empty classrooms. Those are just some of the themes at escape rooms all across the world. We first told you about the escape room coming to Fargo earlier this month. Today we got a look inside. Valley News Team's Christy Larson shows us the challenging fun. It started in Japan and moved across Europe and is now popping up throughout the United States. We wanted things that we could bring back to Fargo that would be that challenge and could bring the excitement into something different. An escape room consists of clues, puzzles, and of course locks. Then as a team you work together to get out. You go out with your friends and it makes you think a little bit. It makes you sort of uh, tease your mind a bit and, and uh, that exciting feeling that you get once you pop that first lock open is uh, it's, it's pretty fun. It's a trend you may have even seen on TV like the Big Bang Theory. Got the key! So that's the key to the door? That's it? But don't worry. $200 on six minutes of fun? Unlike in this episode where they made it out in six minutes, that won't be happening at the Fargo escape room. We like the degree of difficulty to be just a hair more. So that's why we've spent August really doing a lot of beta testing, making sure that our clues are as difficult as, as we want them to be. The rate of groups who will make it out is only around 20%. We want the groups who are in there to not necessarily be frustrated, but to be in there and have to really try to get out. The game is about teamwork, communication, and finding out what strengths you have. The talker, the leader, the, um, the clue finder who you never expected, the hidden Sherlock Holmes that, that comes out and will find the clues that you just never expected them to find. And whether you make it out of the room or not, it's all about having fun. We have a lot of things to do around here, but nothing like this. Christy Larson, Valley News Live.
Sounds like fun. The Fargo Escape Room officially opened September 3rd, and their second room will open in October. It costs $28 a person. To book a time for the room, go to valleynewslive.com and click on our hot button for a link to their page. The Moorhead Farmers Markets moved indoors because of the weather we're having. The event is still going on. It's inside the Moorhead Center Mall, and it's going to go until 7 o'clock tonight. Booths will be set up inside the southwest parking lot doors between Herbergers and Vicks Lounge. The city says vendors will be selling a wide variety of homegrown and homemade items.